Do you ever feel stuck, like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this segment of Play Big with Sharon Lecter podcast. And today I want to talk to you about storytelling. You know, as we're kids, we learn to tell stories, we read stories. And then, of course, as we get a little older, we start telling stories. There's a connotation that we're not telling necessarily the truth. But when you want to be communicating with somebody and you want to communicate effectively, it's important to understand that it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. So we talk about that in presentation skills. Um, you know, this, are you monotone and not changing your volume? Or are you truly adding the emotion to your voice? Are you using your hands? If you're on the telephone, are you making sure you're smiling, right? Those are all things that related to the delivery of your communication. But what you say is also equally as important. And this came home really to me very, very clearly. Um, when I started working with the guys out of New York and they said I needed to be more vulnerable to share my story about losing my son. And I still remember when we talked about it, I could even, I said, you want me to be more vulnerable? I couldn't even say the word. Cause you know, I grew up at a time with a dad in the military that you're, you're supposed to show how smart you are, right? You're not supposed to show vulnerability. And so it's really come home because I've seen what's happened with people that when I speak um, even to a large group or a small group one-on-one, -on -one, when I open that part of my pain and suffering and share what I went through, they, there's a relation. They, yeah, they hear me sharing my story. And so I challenge you to ask yourself if you're, if you're truly sharing your story. Now, when you look up and you do Google, you know, storytelling, they'll talk about, you know, you have, you introduce your characters, you set the scene, you come up with a challenge, right? And then you have a, a, the problem, and then you have the crisis, and then you have the climax, and then it comes down, you have the emotion, you have the resolution, you know, and then you have the happily ever after, right? So there's like this hills and valleys. Well, when you're speaking to someone else, you want to make sure that you are paying attention to them as you're speaking to see if they are responding to how you're communicating because some people want facts and figures right other people want the emotional side and so to be effective in storytelling when you are in a live audience it's also important to read the audience and figure out how the best delivery um, you know what the best delivery would be for that group now, your storytelling, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of people out there on stage right now that tell stories, but they're not true. So I want to challenge you to think about, you know, the truth I used to say to a guy I used to speak with all the time. I said, you know, the truth is pretty good. You don't need to go get up there and lie and embellish. Your, your true story is pretty darn good and probably more relatable to the people in the audience. But somehow we just feel like we have to puff up and uh, puff up the story as well as our delivery of it. And so I think about the, the learning opportunities you've had, I'm not gonna call them mistakes, and, and, the, and what you went through, that roller coaster of emotions and anger and sadness. And understand that anybody you speak to has experienced those emotions. They may not have experienced the exact thing that happened to you. So they might not relate to that, but when you say how that thing impacted you, the ups and downs of the emotion, 
that they may relate to from something completely different that happened in their life. But when they hear the roller coaster of emotions that you went through and they can relate to it, then they're going to sit up and take notice and say, oh, I need to listen to this person. Yeah, I've been there, done that. And so part of effective storytelling is getting to that, wow, I can relate to that. Or, yeah, I've been there, I've done that. So that you have a connection. And when I talk about writing your story in a book, right? Um, so many people write a book and they want to sound really smart. You want to share your knowledge. And so if, if you think about a textbook in school, right, you've got the book. You read the words, it goes into your eyes and into your brain, right? So a straight line, book, eye, brain. And that stays there and hopefully you remember it when it comes to test time, right? Well, when you really want to make an impact, you want to share your story or share a story so that when somebody's reading it, it's actually going to go down to the heart, emotions. So book, eye, heart, heart, brain. When the heart's involved, it lasts. There's memory. There's an attachment that lasts beyond the book being put down because that heart memory is still there. And so don't be afraid to tell your story. Don't be afraid to talk about being afraid because you know people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And telling your story is how they can build that trust, get to know you, and like you. And realize that you know a lot of people um, will say, you know, I'm not ready for you yet. And then I realize I haven't done a good job in telling my story to get them to feel safe, right? You want your people to feel like they can approach you, that you're approachable. And being vulnerable in telling your story is a huge role in making yourself available and approachable. And that's something that, uh, and whatever you do, you, you could be an employee, you could be selling cars, you could be an entrepreneur, you could be a CEO. Being able to communicate effectively is important to attain the, the level of success that you deserve. And, but if you want to communicate effectively, you want to include somebody's heart. And the best way to do that is by telling your story. Now, I, I've been on the circuit many, many times, many years. And I've, I've heard people get up there and talk about um, they made a million, lost it, made a million, lost it. You know, not exactly somebody I'd want to listen to. I figure if you learn about money, you should figure out how to keep it, not lose it. But at the same time, because of that roller coaster of emotions, people in, engage with that. And so if you can balance telling the truth but being vulnerable, then you have the best of both worlds. You have people who are engaged with you, all right? By telling your story with emotion, you allow people to engage with you. And when they can engage with you, then they know, like, and trust you. And that's where you have the bond. Between. They can be, you know, a mentoring relationship. It can be doing business with somebody. Or you just get to the point where they say, tell me more. I talk about your elevator pitch. All right. Think about you need to be able to tell your story, right? What you do what your market is, how you do it differently than other people, and what you can do for them, the benefit to the individual. And the target is to have them say, tell me more, right? Same thing. So when you tell a story, you want people to say, oh, I want to know more about you. Tell me more. And if you're not getting that kind of response, then maybe you're coming on too strong with a sales pitch. So again, educate first, give, 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 give before you ask. Same thing in your story. I'm working on a book right now. 
with with a gal and you know there are pieces of it that I'm suggesting to her she might want to adjust because it comes across a little salesy great information wonderful information but it can be it the way it's being told the way the story the way it's being told right now is a little more um, how great I art okay it's a little bit more salesy than it should be information is fabulous we just need to fine-tune a few way uh, the way it's being delivered the way the story is being told you know I, I um, coach young people you know, with the uh, boys and girls clubs they do uh, one child from each club gets awarded star of the year and they present in front of five to a hundred to a thousand adults in the audience. And so they go through Toastmasters and they get coached on how to deliver their story. And so they're very nervous, right? And they write it out and they have people go through it and help them. And then they get coached on how to deliver that from a podium. And that's something that, you know, again, how do you tell your story? Um, you know, and many of these kids are so, they're so nervous, you know, they have to really practice and practice because you get very emotional. For me, today, still, when I'm doing, talking about something, I bring up my son, a lot of times, you know, the tears come, and that's something that is just the truth. And it's okay. Now, I grew up in a home where tearing, you know, crying was not welcomed. It was like, doesn't help anything. And so as an adult, I cry a little more freely than I used to. But that's also part of just being real in the moment. So have you told your story? Have you told your whole story? Have you used the emotion and shared that? You know, think of a time when you were afraid. And tell yourself that story and see if you can plug back into those emotions. And it's amazing what the changes that you will see and the people, how people respond to you. Um, you know, I, I never want anybody to know anything. You know, I didn't want anybody to ever think I was using my son's death as a way to, you know, as a tool. That's a lot of why I didn't really share it. And when, when I was told, you know, you really should, you need to be more honest and vulnerable about, about the things that you've been going through. I wasn't dishonest. I just wasn't telling that part of the story. But the first time I really shared it was in Liverpool. I had so many people, just too many to count, came up with tears in their eyes who had suffered similar losses or knew somebody who did or just you know, wanted to support me or also wanted to get a hug from me. You know, it was, so it was, it was really amazing to me to see the reaction that was – truly from the heart and that's you know people we focus on our on people's wallets but if we focus on their hearts you'll get better results in the long run so thank you for being with me i want you to you know practice your storytelling how can you fine tune it find a friend practice it on them and uh, see if you can make yourself a little more vulnerable a little more real a little more open heart to heart have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to this segment of the podcast. Now come to the private Facebook group and you'll be able to um, hear the little next step on storytelling. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.